Uh, so Tammy, why don't you tell folks out there a little bit about yourself and, and you've been experiencing some, some paranormal. So, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I am what I would consider a sensitive. I've seen spirit since I was five. Um, at the age of 12, I went through a pretty traumatic experience. And I think that is when something attached itself to me. Um, at that point, things started happening in the house that I was living in, moving on their own, doors closing by themselves, um, just weird things. And those things were escalating, escalating, escalating. We contacted a priest. They blessed the house. I mean, nothing we did helped. Um, and then it kind of just from there, it really just every house I lived in was the same type of activity. And I thought at that point in my life that maybe it was just because I'm sensitive and I drew spirits in, like around me. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really realize what was going on until probably about five or six years ago. Um, okay. Just kind of piecing things together. Okay, every house, same type of stuff. Um, and then was it 2000? Gosh, I want to say about 2018, 2000. Yeah, about 2018, I put cameras up in my house and we were capturing things moving on their own and, and stuff like that. Um, we captured the shadow figure, like kind of peeking out and then going back in, um, just all kinds of things. And I ended up moving to Texas and I was thinking, please, Lord, just like. <laughs> Let this thing go away. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, Because every time we would, like, I would have priests bless the house. I have had demonologists. I've had other paranormal investigators. I mean, you name it. I've tried it. And every time that we tried to remedy the situation, it just made things worse. Right. Um, so I moved to Texas. And my friend Tara picked my mom and I up from the airport. And we got to our house and I'm walking through the front door and I'm like, oh, this is the office. And then like, I look up at the stairs and I see this big shadow figure and I was like, oh my God, Tara looked and she saw it too. And I was just like, crap, <laughs> like right. I just can't get away from this. Um, and I didn't want to put cameras up or anything because I just didn't want to give it that attention or that energy. Um, right. But things were going crazy. Things were happening from the very beginning. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to capture this, like, so other people can see. Um, right. So I did end up putting cameras back in the house probably about five to six months after I moved in. Um, and I think within the first week, like, the same kind of figure appeared in, like, the kitchen area that appeared in the house in California. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is crazy. So my mom and I kind of sat down and kind of did like a timetable of all these things that occurred and we're like okay so obviously this is the same thing right um and so i just i trace it back to what happened to me when i was 12 because that's when it all started um i talked to an exorcist we did uh minor rites of exorcism things were moving in the bedroom doors were slamming shut i did not like it um now was this when you were 12 or is this where you're talking recently this was just what a year and a half two years ago oh okay, it's okay. probably about a year and a half ago um so it's always just been there um i can go to a grocery store and things will fly off the shelves in front of me um it's it's insane so this whole thing is kind of what got me into the paranormal um because i wanted to help people that were dealing with the same things that i was Right. Because, um, you know, people don't believe other people or, you know, mock <laughs> them or whatnot. And I didn't want people to feel like they were alone. Um, oh, yeah. So and in, in the world of paranormal, it's it's going to be tough because you're always going to have skeptics. You're always going to have people, you know, it, you're going to have your, your disbelievers. But let's go back to the beginning. Um, and so what was it like when you first you said 12? So when did you first realize that you were experiencing something that was not normal? It was when I was 12. So like I said, I saw spirits in that, since I was five, but it wasn't always like, it mostly wasn't in my home. It would be like somebody standing on the corner, they'd be gone or stuff like that. So I didn't deal with like things moving around by themselves until I was 12. So, you know, we would be home and, 
something would move or the cat would. So back in the day, we had the bigger TVs and my right. cat likes to sleep on top of it. Um, and we were in the family room watching TV and she literally like scoots off the TV, but like levitate and then right. drop down. Um, so it's just stuff like that. My mom and I would be home by ourselves. A, a, we'd hear a door slam shut. It's like an like unnatural that. dismount. <laughs> yeah, all the time. There was right. like weird oils that would drip from the wall. And it, it was just always crazy things. And my mom was a believer because like I, I get the sensitivity from her side of the family. So now how did she explain it to you though? Like how, what like how did she try to explain to you as a 12 or did she already start explaining stuff to you before 12? Well, we would talk about stuff like that with my grandma and my mom. Like, my grandma saw spirits, too, and she would tell me stories about that. So that kind of thing kind of had already been talked about. Um, but obviously more so when started, things started happening to our family and in the house. Um, and I, I, oddly enough, like, I was never – I can't say I was never scared of it, but I was always like, kind of intrigued by it. Um, obviously when things were happening and a lot of things would happen in my bedroom, that scared me, you know, I'm 12 years old. Um, right. I, I remember one day things were just crazy. And so I was like, I'm calling the priest. So I called the priest, like a church myself. And I was like, these are things that are happening. Like, what can I do? And the priest was like, oh, just name it. Just give it a name and, and tell it to stop. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. That obviously didn't work. Um. So then we eventually had a priest come in and bless the house. That didn't work. So it was just always something happening. And it was like just noises or things moving. And I, I remember one time I opened the medicine cabinet and um, I think it was eye drops or something like came out and like, like the cat like levitated and then dropped down. So it was always right. stuff like that happening constantly messing with the cats um, the cat would be in the room and get spooked. Their tail would fluff out huge and hair sticking up on the back. Like just, it was always stuff like that. Right now. I do want to get into a little bit of that as well. Let me take a quick moment and let's just say hi to everybody real quick. Cause I know, I don't know if you can see the stream, but we got Alexander Blackburn said, hello. Uh, hi. so cat, of course. Hey, cat. Uh, Wayne Monroe said hello. Chris T said Hi, my Chris. girl. Hey Tammy, and Terry Lynn Morris came in there. Terry Lynn, what's up, girl? That's <laughs> <laughs> now Terry Lynn. Uh, that's beyond beyond the veil. So it's good to see her in there. Um, glad to see you pop in. Um, but yeah. Uh, so so I just want to take a moment. I always try to acknowledge everybody in chat when I can. Oh, uh, absolutely, Christian. Hey, Christian. Uh, Christian, my son. So, but yeah, the, um, all right. So get, getting back to like that, that sort of childhood. So what, I mean, how did the, your mom sort of explain that to you? Cause like, this sounds like these were things that were regularly happening. I mean, what was the explanations that were given to you back then? She, you know, basically just said that there's a haunting, there's a spirit in the house. Um, I don't remember like the sit down conversations per se from way back then, um, but I, I remember like I had talked to her about like seeing the spirits and stuff like that. And, you know, just kind of explained that kind of ran on my mom's side of the family. Like all my grandma had nine sisters. Right. Um, so all of the females, like cousins, everybody, like they've all had some sort of gift in their life. Um, so it was something that it was just always going to be there. And yeah. I, I kind of embraced it. By the time I was 16, I was like trying to do EVPs, <laughs> like not right. even knowing what the hell I was doing, but trying to, um, cause I didn't want so, to be scared of it anymore. When they were like, so they were basically like, they were suggesting different things. And, and you said that there was a lot of things that sound like even as into your adulthood that weren't working. Well, why do you think that things weren't working? Like when, you know what I mean? Like methods to help, either prevent, block, separate, you know, what, what do you think was holding those things back? Did you ever figure that out? I just feel like this thing has a stronghold. It, it's definitely something darker. Um, it attached to me through something absolutely horrible that happened to me. Um, and when I was speaking more recently with the exorcist, like 
kind of giving him a breakdown of, you know, everything that's gone on in my life and family history and stuff. You know, he's just like, this thing has a really strong hold on you. And he thinks that it might possibly be two things um, because he thinks there's also like a generational curse. Um, my great grandma on my mom's side of the family, she dabbled in some really dark things. Um, she was not a very good person. My great, great grandma, I should say. Um, so I, I don't know if things kind of stem from there as well. Right. Um, but yeah, everything I've done, everything, you know, I, I've i never been a sage person. I don't think that that's always a good idea, especially when you don't know what you're dealing with. But mm. like, I mean, everything from saging the house to, you know, a minor rise of exorcism, nothing has worked. Like everything has made it worse. So right. it's hard. Like, what's the next step? What do I do? Like, that's the very, that's the frustrating part of it. And people are like, how have you done this for so long? Cause it's been what, 30, 31 years, 32 years. And it's like, after that long, like it kind of becomes a normal part of your life. If that makes sense. Like, right. I don't, I don't know what normal is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that because I've experienced this stuff since I was a child. Right. And you just kind of normalize other people. It might scare them. And you've kind of, I'm sure that the edge has come off. Um, but I'm sure there's probably still moments. Obviously, it, it sounds to me like you're still wanting to, you know, to to get rid of this thing. Right. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, it, it causes things to go wrong in my life. Like, I, I've always had, like, weird health stuff that, like, the doctor can never figure out blood works always normal this that and the other um and it's always just been something i always feel like there's like a black cloud above me um i can't say that there's not things in my life i am grateful for because i am i have an amazing family but i feel like this thing has just kind of held me back in ways um right and i, I want to go on <laughs> i don't want to have to live like this i mean does it still scare me sometimes? Yeah. I mean, there it's held me down in my bed. It's choked me. I have a picture that has like weird hand mark on my neck. It's physically attacked my mom, my sister. Like I, I don't like those things happening. Um, and they're still happening to this day. So I want it gone. <laughs> I want to know what normal is. Right. And, and it is rare. Like, I, I mean, I've been involved in paranormal for, 30 years and it is rare to get cases that can't be controlled there's generally in most paranormal when there's situations and spirits there's certain things that tend to always work like always work mm -hmm. no matter what they always tend to work that's that's just things that's been proven over thousands of years or through through certain th certain things that are passed on so when you have a situation where something there's there's some methods aren't working and whatever it's always tough there is some things i think out there i'm gonna you know for sure i'll probably send you like i'll, I'll try to hook you up with somebody that um might be able to help you out even more also mm -hmm. um that uh, I, I got a friend that's very very knowledgeable on some things that uh spiritually on a deep level that has some good stuff and, and also knows about spells and curses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I'll, uh, I'll connect you up with, uh, with him, you know, too, as well. But, okay. um, so, so you, so basically at, at some point you decided, all right, I'm going to start filming this stuff and kind of sharing it and trying to, trying to take it to, to, to the people. Um, let's see, what did uh, Alexander say? Alexander says, I will say you are one strong woman to deal with something of this magnitude and still stay calm. Most people wouldn't. Thank you. Um, so I would imagine just kind of saying, like, even if she's saying that, I imagine now you're probably a lot more sort of resolved. Like you said, you've kind of normalized it, but I'm sure there was many other times you weren't so calm. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, there's times recently that I was freaked out. I remember um, I just bought a house recently, but the house that I was in previously, um, one night I heard this god awful, just like loud, like I couldn't, I can't even explain it. Sound, and it sounded like big, heavy furniture was being dragged above me. And so, like my camera upstairs caught the sound, but it was just, it was terrifying, and it, and 
I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? I can't, I don't have anywhere to go. Like I have to stay here. And it's just like when certain things happen still, it, it is very scary. Um, like my, my sisters, cause we all lived together in, in, when we first moved out to Texas and she was in her bed upstairs and she kept seeing this thing like this big shadow figure kind of peeping in and out of the room and she starts praying and she's god please let this thing go away please let this thing go away and it like slams down on the foot of the bed and then it climbs in on top of her it is holding her down and i'm hearing her screaming from mm -hmm. the other side of the house and i'm just like what the hell you know and so things like that is very unsettling like things moving on their own like that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> That's kind of the stuff that we want to see as paranormal investigators. But when you're physically attacked, like that's a whole different level of stuff. So it's, I don't know, dealing with that and my family, like dealing, me, I'm like, whatever. But when my family gets hurt, like that's just, I can't, that's not okay with me at all. And so have you been running like EVPs and like experiments and stuff? I mean, because you were mentioned paranormal investigation. Are you running experiments to try to capture any voices or communications? Oh, yeah, we've had um, my friend Tara and I, I mean, we've investigated the houses and numerous times and we've gotten so many EVPs and so many different responses. Um, even said a name a couple of times. Um and just like crazy, creepy voices. Like my cameras even pick up creepy voices. <laughs> I, right. I don't know if you've seen a couple of the videos on, on Facebook, but um, it's never like a straight answer. We've gotten, a, we do the um, Estes method because we tend, we tend to get more through that than anything. It's a and, good cross, it's a good cross confirmation method. Yeah, definitely, because we're recording it. And so you can hear this, these, these other voices talking. Um, we get a lot of Arabic, um, even in like our EVPs, which I find really interesting too. Hmm. It's just, we've gotten a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, enough, to, and I've gone live and people have experienced it for themselves. Cause you know how people are in <laughs> the paranormal. Oh, it's fake, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, people have experienced it. I mean, anybody that's come to my home have experienced it. Right. Um, so what's your, I mean, so what's the next step for you, like, on this? Like, what What are you hoping to accomplish here soon with, with this situation? You know, I would love to get, get somebody in here that I can actually get rid of it. And I'm not saying that in a bad way to the people that have helped me in the past because I know that they did everything that they could. Um, but maybe it's just a different method that we need to do. Um, I don't know, you know, we get a lot of Arabic and I find that kind of interesting. And so maybe different people of different uh, religious backgrounds. I don't know. They, there's not a whole lot more. <laughs> I, I don't think at this point because of every type of person that I've had try to come help. Um, but I'm going to keep continuing to try to get rid of it, of course. Um, okay. I don't yeah, know. And, and I think, you, and, and I definitely think you should share, and you know, you should still try to record what you can and, and share experiences along the way. I think that just helps, and, and it just also can catalog even more evidence for you, too. You know, oh, absolutely, definitely. I mean, I keep all my videos, I have a ton of EVPs and all of that, and I've saved a lot of my lives, so I have all that documented as well. Um, and where can people find, just to let people know that maybe aren't familiar with you that watch this, where can they find you? Like, where all can they find your your stuff at? Um, I do have a TikTok. I mostly just, like, reshare videos at this point. I'm not really posting too much to it, but there's a lot of videos on it. Um, and that is, I think it's The Haunted 136. The Haunted 136? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a YouTube, but I don't, I don't use it really so that's probably the best place to see like the evidence and footage okay is that the same um as i can't remember off the top of my head i i think i've subscribed to your youtube but i'm trying to remember if is that the same because well, I, I used one of your links youtube youtube i don't even remember i think there's the haunted the, is it the haunt i think it's just the haunted one 
Yeah, I think the haunted um, one. I think that's yeah, I think that's what it is. I like I said, I haven't used it in forever, so I don't <laughs> really remember. Okay. Um, so main so basically the, the best way is gonna be TikTok, and you said the haunted the haunted, the haunted 136. 136. Mm-hmm. All right, awesome. Well, uh I wish you luck on that. We're gonna we're gonna move forward now into another segment, and um, that is that's crazy. Like I said, I as look as a paranormal investigator, I'll be honest with you. Like I'm more than happy to connect you with somebody that's in that may be able to help you out. Me mm-hmm. personally, like I would be, I would be the kind of person like if I could investigate and do all that stuff, I would be. But is it something that might be over my head? Probably. You know, I, it's I'm I'm willing enough. I'm I'm man enough to admit when it's out of my element and something like that to me is going to be on a higher level. That's going to be need to be dealt with people that are more familiar in classic uh, demonology and stuff, because, you know, when you're talking about a battle with evil spirits, it's, you know, I do know a lot about it. It's just, it's just not, it's just a rare case, you know? So taking on things like that, like, people shouldn't take those on if they, if they don't believe that they can re- truly help you because they can just make things worse. Exactly. So, and I think so many right. people reach out to investigate and they just want the thrill of it. They don't want to help me. Right. So it's exactly. like, no, I don't want you in my house. And honestly, I don't trust very many people in the paranormal community. So, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. That's just not the route I would ever go unless it's somebody that I truly trust. Um, but it's hard because people these days really just want to put stuff on their YouTube channels and, you know, right. a lot of people aren't really willing to help. And a lot of people in the paranormal community don't even believe in demons. <laughs> so, well, and that's the problem. You know, again, yeah. there's a majority of the YouTube paranormal community are self-serving. They want to have clicks and views. So they're either going to use your situation for those clicks and views or they just believe in surface level stuff because they're just doing things. A lot of them are faking it half the time anyways. Yeah. They've never so, really experienced a real haunting. <laughs> right. anyways, so, I mean, so. like You're better off not dealing with most of those people anyways. Yeah. But I also put on here, Chris T did put your um, TikTok in the comments. So I put that up on the screen for a second. So if anybody uh, needs to see what it looks like, that's how it's spelled. And that's where you can find Tammy. So, 